Hello everyone! Welcome to part 2 of my conversation with So Rayo, our national record holder in the marathon and double defending SEA Games gold medalist. Now in this part of our conversation, we talk about his passion for his sport, why he shares all his training data online, and also about his moments of great generosity and sportsmanship in competition. Now if you like this part of the conversation, please do check out the other parts of our conversation. Is that you put a lot of your training data online, Mm -hmm. uh, and I know it's meant to help people, but is that common in the running community? Because I, I don't know that as much. Is that common? Uh, the answer is no. Okay. It's, not, it's not very common. Um, and I don't understand why it's not more common because, I mean... Well, I can definitely understand why it's not okay, common. I, I, I take that back. I can understand why it's not common because yeah. I think there are two things. One is um, run, runners tend to... I mean, a lot of runners tend to be... Runners out of all... Compared to like many other sports like boxing, football, yeah. whatever, runners tend to be a bit more like reserved. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you tend to find distance runners especially, compared to sprinters as well. Mm -hmm. I think the sprinter and distance runner, sprinter tends to be a bit more brash, the distance runner tends to be a bit more soft-spoken yeah. in general. I think that's just the nature of it. I mean, you're, you're yeah. brash in the marathon and make like a uh, shoot from the hip decisions. It yeah. doesn't play out well most of the time. Uh. Yeah. Um, so, I think that you know, runners tend to be a bit like you know they don't, they don't want people to know too much about them. Mm -hmm. They're just happy doing their own thing, doing their own work, and um, and I think that's why there's not a lot. It's not just training data, but also like in general, um, runners, distance runners mm -hmm. don't put themselves out in the media out mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. there as much. Um, I do it because I think that a it helps mm -hmm. uh, athletes. I mean, uh, I I hesitate to label. People as followers or fans. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would say those people who like keep track of who want my, to learn from yeah, you as well. Yeah, keep, keep track of my training. Yeah, they if I mean I think a lot of them they like it. Mm -hmm. They I, I get positive feedback about it, mm -hmm. and they and there's nothing better than you know they, they them receiving an email or a comment or a message saying that thank you for uh, sharing this piece of yeah. this workout or this piece of work or this or this run that you did. I applied it to my own training as well and I really like it. Mm -hmm. So I mean it's nice, you know. Like yeah, you know, you're not yeah. just you're not just um becoming a better athlete but you're yeah. you're inspiring uh, inspiring other people to yeah. to become better runners as well and yeah. that's cool. But so this, yeah. sorry, no go on. No, but on. also I think especially at the highest level where the stakes are very high, I mm -hmm. mean the difference between Olympic gold and Olympic silver is a big drop off. Yeah. Between a bronze and a nothing is also a big drop off. So at that level when they're everyone's fighting for three medals, you do really like runners really don't want people to yeah. know anything about them. They don't want you to know what they're good at, what they're mm -hmm. weak at, they want you to exploit um mm -hmm. exploit their their weaknesses or like or like blunt their strengths. Yeah. Um and in a sense that when I'm when I go to the SEA games I do I do um um feel that, you know, you you don't want to give people an edge over yeah. over you. But at the same time the the flip side to that is you know I put my training out there mm -hmm. you look at it uh if you think that you can do what I do you go and do what you take the plan and go and do and then if they don't yeah. win still you're like yeah guess what but at the same time just because you're doing the same workout as me mm -hmm. doesn't mean you're gonna become the same runner that mm -hmm. I am you mm -hmm. know yeah. performance is made out of very of so many different things mm -hmm. training your recovery your psychological makeup yeah. uh how you execute a race so I just think that in the grand scheme of things your training plan is just one of the so many things yeah. that can make a difference that to me I'm not afraid of. Uh, sharing it. I mean, I've done it all the way since um, the first SEA Games and mm -hmm. it hasn't seemed to hurt my SEA Games performances yeah. um, or nor has it seemed to give up a good edge over me and in fact, yeah. Argus is also like, not as it, he's not as open as in every single session mm -hmm. like, like I am like mm -hmm. you can find every single session that I do mm -hmm. online but, but him, from time to time he shares his yeah. sessions as well and actually, it does have a bit of uh, a, a, a mind game because yeah. before the, I raised him at the SEA Games, he was putting out all these, these ridiculous training sessions that were really, really long and really, really fast. Still and like, mess up with you. And I was, ah, I don't think it's intentional, yeah. but yeah. I was, I remember looking at some of the workouts and I was like, I can't do that in training, man. Like, I, I better <laughs> hope that I can do, I mean, I, I, I might be able to do that in a race, but I can't do that in training, so he must yeah. be in really good shape. But I mean, at the end of the day, you still have to go out there and race. And yeah. So you can have the best training ever, but on that same, on that day, everyone starts on the same yeah. starting line. Yeah. And, you can beat better runners by executing a better race plan. Yeah, that's what I believe. So, yeah, but I hope I answered your question. Yeah, yeah. it's not common. But um, I'll, the one last thing I'll add to that yeah. is I train with a coach, uh, Ben, with Coach Ben Rosario mm -hmm. in Flagstaff, Arizona, mm -hmm. and he's one of the few, if not the only, group in the US or the world mm -hmm. where he makes it him and 
their sponsor, their, their sponsor Hoka Oni Oni, <coughs> makes it compulsory for the whole team to post all the training hmm. online. It's interesting. Yeah. That's their. Do you think that sponsor would put it? Yeah, man. Yeah, they, 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 they want it because it helps the runners uh, connect with their fans mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it sets them apart from other groups because they are open, there are no secrets, and you know what you're getting yeah. with, with that group. Yeah. yeah. So I think this point around sort of your willingness to, op- to open and share, I think, it, okay, so it links to another side of your, of your sort of competitive spirit that I, I think is sort of underreported in the press, which is, them, I think both in, there, there were a few incidents over the last few years where it's just like immense moments of generosity when you race. I think the first is in 2012 or something, Ashley Liu or something fell down, you picked them up, yeah. you stopped yeah. and you picked them up, oh, I, I, that's yeah, one. I, I'll correct yeah. that. Uh, I think sometimes stories get distorted. Get, get, yeah, distorted. It, it, it was the same for his case when yeah. he stopped in the Sea Games marathon. Uh, when it was reported that he stopped in the Sea Games yeah. marathon, I mean, personally, I don't, I don't remember him stopping. I turned yeah. around, he was already running away. Yeah. But the story <laughs> went from he stopped to he stopped and guided everyone onto the same track <laughs> before running, and then and to uh, a legend and, of his own. Yeah. So yeah. I, so so it was like yeah. I, I mean, stories like that get twisted. Yeah. And so, I mean, for my case, I yeah. heard like a few different versions of the yeah. story so I'll say my version I didn't pick him up yeah. he, we were running I was maybe slightly ahead mm-hmm. we stepped up a curb mm-hmm. uh, in the dark I mean yeah. Singapore at night yeah. Yeah. Uh, usually our, our, our streets are quite well lit like, yeah. this, is, this area area that, you know, it wasn't very well lit and then yeah. it, was a rip, it was a carpet like going up the curb he tripped on the curb he fell down so I mean, it wasn't even something that I thought about. I instinctively just yeah. stopped. I was like, "Hey, man, like, are you okay?" Yeah. And he got up, and then I was like, "All right, like you, like, like, you follow me for a while, yeah. c- catch your breath back." Yeah. And then we went on for a few more minutes, but I mean, naturally, knocked the wind out of him, So yeah. he, so he wasn't able to keep up. But, but you know, so kind of- you stopped at that moment, and then you also in the twenty seventeen games, you I know this this is reported in the news, but you like gave um Agus your drink. Or oh, you might oh, yeah. have to drink or something. Oh yeah, so on that occasion was you know, we were racing around we were, we were racing for quite a while and mm-hmm. like, he was setting quite a quite a blistering pace for that kind of weather and he burned off everyone except myself yeah. and uh, I was just behind him at one of the water stations. Uh, so single file, he grabbed it uh, I grabbed my bottle, he either missed or didn't get his or didn't get I, I couldn't I, I didn't see exactly what happened, but I thought he missed his bottle. Mm-hmm. So I Took a drink and I went up to him and you know you passed him. I, pa- I passed him my drink and this one I actually had time to think of. yeah part of it was like you know do I want to help someone who's gonna yeah. challenge why me why do you end? care I guess is the question yeah, I have yeah it, it, it's it's a good question because um in that moment I'm I'm really in the zone so it, it didn't really it didn't even like I I didn't even get reminded about this until I read the article later mm. on then I was like oh yeah actually that happened you know there's so many things happening and you're dehydrated you're yeah. exhausted and I I think. There are a lot of things that happen in a marathon that I forget by the time I'm mm-hmm. done with the marathon mm-hmm. until someone reminds me of it and then but, the flashbacks. But when back. you're running, you instinctively were like, I noticed you didn't drink. You yeah. went and I, it just yeah, it helps that Agus is a good friend of mine. Yeah. Um, if he's someone that I didn't like, it could be a different <laughs> a different issue. But you know, we get along. We get along. I mean, even on non, uh, we when we only meet generally for competition. Mm-hmm. Even when we're not meeting, like you know, I send send him a text from time to time asking mm-hmm. how he's mm-hmm. doing, how his daughter is doing, how his wife is doing. Um, so we already get along mm-hmm. on a on a friend level. So I mean, if you see a friend in a in a endurance race in in hot conditions, like miss a drink, yeah. I think my instinct is to help my friend. So I yeah. think it was made on a friend level rather yeah. than a com- competitor level. But what yeah. if Ashley and or Argus had beaten you in a race though? So? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, uh, like... I mean, I, I I mean at that point. Yeah, it was possible that Agus could have gone on to beat me in the race, mm-hmm. but I think at the end of the day, you want it to be a fair fight. You know, if if you, hey, if you lose in a fair fight, you know that you lost to a better runner, mm-hmm. um, and you have no you have no regrets. I mean, like, I I wouldn't have said, oh, he beat me. Damn it, I shouldn't have given him my drink yeah. at kilometer yeah. thirty. Uh, or maybe I would have. Like, who knows? But I mean, yeah. it, that was a it was, it was uh, I mean, it didn't happen, so yeah. it's hard to say. But you know, in in that. Uh, in that moment, that was the decision that I chose to make based on yeah. uh, the information that was made available to me. But I think that's, I mean, to me personally, I think that's remarkable because I mean, I grew up playing sports, not at the level that you do it, but from a young age, you are taught your competitors 
not really your friend, right? Like yes, you can be friends outside of it, but yeah. when you're in the when you're in in the court or on the track or you know on 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 the course, the mistake is the mistake, and and you don't even try yeah. to fix it for anyone, right? Yeah. It's like too bad for you. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna judge. Like there are people who are very if you're if you are like I mean, people would say a true competitor would just maximize your own chances to yeah. win, and there are other people who would say that you know like it's just a game. Like end of the yeah. day, like you wanna take care of the people around you. Um, you know, if so, I mean, we're just talking about water ball. What if the competitor had collapsed? Mm. Like, what what would you have done? Would you like would I have stopped? Would you would you like call for an ambulance? I mean, there are people available to call an ambulance. So do you want to stop and make sure it's okay? Do you, what 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 will you do? Especially when you're also suffering yourself. There was an mm. issue in the Commonwealth Games this year where uh, the leader was like from Scotland. Callum Hawkins was like mm-hmm. two minutes ahead of everyone. Mm-hmm. Very very hot. Collapsed two k from the end. Yep. And the Australian guy in the second place like ran. Part, eventually, I mean, he was two minutes behind, caught up with yeah. him, saw him in a heap on the ground, but there was already medical personnel yeah. there. So the Australian guy kept running. He was also like cramping up, he was yeah. also about to yeah. die. He made it to the end, won, and some people blasted him for not stopping for, not stopping for the guy. Can't, you can't have it both ways, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, what do you expect him to do? Yeah. There, was a, there was already medical personnel there yeah. helping the guy. If, if the guy was like alone, composing, mm-hmm. that's a different issue. Because I think that end of the day, between a medal mm-hmm. and a human life, Human life is I, is obviously more important, la. So mm-hmm. I mean, it, I would have understood if um, he had ignored the the dying guy yeah. by himself and like just continued running to win the medal. Yeah. But the fact is that there was already medical personnel there. So, so you see, like there, there are so many yeah. ways to read the situation. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I mean I don't think that Agus would have uh, been in a fatal condition, mm-hmm. but I thought that you know it, it was something that he would probably they would probably hit him later on in the marathon. Mm-hmm. So I mean that was. Again, again, we're we are on friendly terms, yeah. and I yeah. think that you know when uh, that that was what kicked in. It was the aspect of helping a friend, and not so much the yeah. community that side of things. So for, I would say for maybe twenty seconds in that race, mm-hmm. um, the competition was le- less important than yeah. like, helping a friend. Out. Hello again. I hope you enjoyed this part of the conversation, and I hope you learned something. Now please let me know what you think. Either comment or reach out to me directly. And if you enjoyed this part of the conversation then please look out for the other videos. I'll see you soon.